Persistent crickets, you be. And I don't get it. But that's okay. We just is. That's what happens. Again, I just see mis- excuses going on. I've been trying to get people to see things generally. Things that are coming on us that have been clear to, to me for quite a long time. Again, as I was reading through my, researching through my problem with what I saw in, in the world, in the United States of America particularly, that's where I live, that's where I was brought up, that's the, the environment that uh, I was used to and continue to be used to. Yeah, I had other ideas of going around the world, I really did want to do that, but it never happened. I like meeting people and seeing how they, well, how they live and understanding their things, I've always liked that. But never got to do that either. And then one year, decades later, as life goes on, life happens to you. Uh, found out that we had a big problem in this thing we've been told about, the so-called America. And this is quite a few decades ago. And that started my quest, if you will, to, if it can be a quest, this is just a, it's a, it's a crime against us. If that's a quest, to figure that out. And, uh, so that's what, uh, what I started doing. And so we come here decades, literally decades and decades, and another decades later, you know, I talk with you every week to try and explain to you, as you look out in the world, you're not seeing an anomaly. You're seeing what the plan is. It's telling you up ahead, before it gets to you, what's going on. It's telegraphing what's happening. And uh, there's really not a surprise in my mind uh, that uh, it's it's there. It's there to tell us what it is if we just have eyes to see and ears to hear. Now, in the process, lots of people trying to figure out, they were post presented a problem. And so they've been trying to figure it out, too. And so we all come from a disparate places and our, our motivations, and uh, we try to make sense of this nonsense, little nonsense, but it's really more of a crime. And it was what was done to us, and, and then the context of what we live in is, that's not an excuse even for us to to, look, to allow it. And, and so this really starts the basic basis of why I just show up every week to tell you things, and would wish more people would do start doing things, because I know that's part of the answer. Uh, having the proper perspective, uh, don't get lulled, always questioning where you're at, what you're doing, uh, but still moving and, 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 and advancing along in this literal war against us. It's been forever. And uh, before I go too far on, this is uh, BTWRLM242. Uh, for those of you that hear in the, hear this on the broadcast podcast, the RLM site or UCY.TV on the recast on Thursday, for this broadcast on Sunday, and then the Broadcasts and uh, other other casts going on at UCY that you can you, you use the show notes to see what I'm when I when I finally get there what, what you what I'm talking about and I don't talk about again the nudist the notice the nudist the notice is the news is the notice is the news is the notice to us and uh, we can look at it I can look at the front headline and pretty much get what I need and, and move on but uh, and some of it's some of it's relevant to me and some of it's not. The thing is, is you can keep tabs and pe- move pretty quick once you start once you start seeing things. And I only have the eyes I have to see and uh, and uh, and ears to hear, but I, I do believe that they're fairly confident. And so, uh, when reviewing things, I do a pretty quick analysis. Sometimes it's maybe a little bit quick for a lot of people, and there's just no way to cover this that th- that stuff on this broadcast. But I can give everybody uh, a touchstone. And I hope, because of the nature, of the comprehensive nature of of, of life, uh, we all have our different drawing, our things that draw to us, our different, uh, well, it's not necessarily always a problem, but it, in, in the case of the things I'm talking about, it certainly is a problem, that we are drawn to the negative parts that that are not the wrongs that, that we see that, that we might or may or may not decide to make right. And that's why I, I say you have to find, it's really got to the point now where you don't, but take things to task, they're going to take you to task. And so, uh, without talking too much more, I wanted to touch on something, such a comprehensive amount of information that's needed. And over my, over my years of researching, I've tried to whittle it down because it's just over, it can be overwhelming. And I can tell you up front now, that's why I say find a wrong you want to make right. If you find a wrong, you're not going to be overwhelmed by the amount of information that's available to uh, get you off the path because you have to, that, that, Wrong is the path, that narrow path that we're told you must follow. Now, there's a, I always have a question of whether or not the, the thing I do is the narrow path I ought to be doing. There's a whole other, other aspects to life. Uh, but I notice that they're all tainted. All the paths are tainted. And so I find myself here. And I find myself doing this. 
And I also put in my mind that there's these other paths I would rather follow, uh, and uh, I keep true to that as well, even though I may not be speaking to it. Because what's happening is that we have a thing happening to us physically in our life that uh, is an, a, a, a monstrous conundrum, if nothing else. And I just tell you it's a crime against you. I, I really don't have any other, other idea about it. And it comes in many different facets. And so to analyze which crime is coming against you or how it has been really a quest for me. And I think I've gotten it funneled down to a pretty narrow narrow um, avenues. And I told you there's probabilities and possibilities and, and these categories you put in your mind and never lock to any one because you may find some new information that alters that, proofs it out or, or eliminates it from being a, a problem, a factor, or even a tool. And to me, the, a lot of these things are tools. Well, information is a big tool. I told you the Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars has given us what's going to happen to us. And they're going to allow us to plug in. You're going to hear, if I get to the news tabs here, I'm already talking past the Past the tabs again, but uh, you'll, we're going to show. I'm going to show you how this all rolls out. How 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 people are universally susceptible to a suggestion. If, if that's the simplest it is, but this is a bigger deal. It really is a plan, and it's not hard to see once you have the eyes and ears to see, eyes to hear, eyes to see, and ears to hear about it. Uh, and it's not just ending there. Once you see that, you realize it's a crime against everybody, and it's against you. So you better t stop being the accessory to it. Well. We even produce, I, I produce information here behind the woodshed, and I, I tell you all the time, you really do have to go read the black and white. You have to go read it for yourself. You have to bring your mind to it. You have to look at things from your perspective. and Don't take my word for it. But I, that's not to say that to excuse it. most anything I say. I think pretty much I've been pretty accurate the whole entire time, and there's not many, if anybody, that's ever come back to show me in any substantial way that there's been an error in what I tell you. And so I keep coming every week with those those points to remind you in any many different facets and uh, I, re I respect quite a few people that are doing work what what I have a problem with sometimes is the interpretation of what that information or respect and, and, and information means in application and this is I think the distinction I bring behind the woodshed it's the act and evolutionary engagement it's the problem child that gets brought out behind and taught the lessons and principles to be used in the future uh, that'll best serve that the one behind the woodshed. But I altered it to say, we the people, we, these people, men and women, have been duped. We have a crime going against us, and we have to bring the one that's doing the crime against us behind the woodshed, and we have to meet out meet out the lesson. Now, part of that is having, and so you have to be the wiser of it all, and you have to be able to be a, a little bit more above, above the basic criminal, essentially. So this isn't me taking you behind the woodshed. This is you coming back and learning how to do it yourself when we weren't taught. And so that requires all this information. It requires synthesizing information. And it, it really requires more interaction than we are given to ourselves, which has been a disappointment for me. Uh, but I do hear stuff, and I, I find valid, uh, most part, I find validity in some people's research, and yet there's always these failures here and there. And it's not a failure to throw out the baby with the bathwater. In some cases, you can take a lot of the information as it is, and then you have to learn how to how to how it would apply. And I've indicated to you when you and I say it in different ways, and maybe not so good. Maybe maybe you don't pick up the subtlety. Maybe I'm and I'm not trying to be subtle. It's just the way it tells. I'm, I'm just it's the way I describe it. When you find yourself in a place that your expectations aren't being met about that place you thought, maybe you should reconsider. You're in that place. Maybe you should reconsider that you might have been in that place, but it got uh, the room furniture got changed on you. The wall decorations got changed. Maybe even the outside fascia was different. You didn't quite understand that someone's moved in on you. And this is where I get to the idea and have come through all my studies and all the possibilities and conditions of categorizing where are we in this world right now. And I mean beyond the uh, agendas, the uh, Agenda 21 stuff, the smart uh, inter interconnected tool they're using to tie everybody up, which everybody's plugging themselves into. It's a, a phenomenal, and we got proof of that here in this last um, uh, marketing session. Uh, everyone's in commerce and don't know it. No one knows how to make a challenge to it, and no one knows how to make, work within it, even though they give us all the rules to do so. Then I will get back to some information. I want to. There's been a lot of ideas, and uh, believe me, I, I've heard. We've heard a lot. I've worked with people for. The same amount of decades I've done research for the same amount of decades I've been working with people who showed me that there was a problem that they were finding that they had seen. And we've done quite a bit of study. What I have probably never ever tell everybody is all the directions and so-called rabbit holes that you can get into. 
uh, to studying about all this. And uh, so, I uh, I heard I hear people talk about information, and I hear I hear someone reading things, and it's somehow you know if I find familiarity in the con in the in the discussion. Uh, but I notice my mind is turning, is now turned much more recently, in the last decade or two, to being able to look inside what someone may claim to be an authority. In fact, using court cases, you'll find that you, know, you think they're an authority. And since I, and I, you know, you kind of take them as an authority because everyone else is going to take them as an authority. But I found, after getting into mining law, it started to show me how a condition can get set up, how a case so-called, a cause, can be adulterated so that the system that is the occupier gets the answer it needs using all of its agents. And so I learned pretty quickly after looking into this mining law and how it works through the courts and how it's not working through the courts, more importantly. Again, this omission of, of law, this omission of correct, correct application to realize that courts are tools the cool can be the tools of our destruction, and I've talked about this before. But I wanted to bring up a, a, a thing that seems to be riding in a lot of people's minds, and, and I don't like it because it shuts everybody down. You say, "Well, here's the point." Well, I see lots of people talking about how we're just property, and so if I'm property, I don't have rights, or I'm not going to get anywhere past the rights, or we're in admiralty, or we're in equity, or we're in commerce, or administrative law, or Oh, the, as I say, the occupation, and numerous occupations, all these are occupations as well. I want to remind you, notwithstanding anybody's fine research about these things, as I'm listening to some people, and at some points I can't listen too long, because the what they say is the outcome of what their reading means is not proper. Where I can listen in, on the fly, and I don't, I can't really go back and requote all this, I just listen to it, and I take a, I take a tenor of what's going on, I can hear that the, the statement that was made, I recognize the case, or I recognize the source, and even if I don't recognize the source, I know the source of the source, of the so-called principle that's being read, and it's not accurate. And yet it's being read as if it's accurate and authoritative. And then we have the other one. It is accurate and is authoritative, but only so far as that authority goes. And this is the key. I keep telling you, if you look close enough, you're going to find a limit. A limit to... The so-called authority. Let me give you some ideas. And I've told you this before. When you find yourself in a forum of a certain type of uh, whatever, jurisdictional authority, if you don't understand how to communicate in there by its terms, and the terms are not words and they're not defined, they're terms defined within the system. If you don't speak within that context, and this Matt, goes everywhere, you can even put it into professions. If I'm a scientist, I won't use the same language as if I'm some kind of electronic engineer or an engineer, a, a, a mechanical engineer or anything. I have different vocabulary. These are all jurisdictions, if I can make it simple that way, uh, to blow this thing out a little bit, to make it less, uh, less esoteric, less occulted. Uh, if, if I was a property, and there's a proof you can make in the United States Code that says you are, like there's the proof you can make that says you're a human and an, only an animal before the legal, and don't forget who's running all this, too. You always have this under overpressing thing. Uh, you also have the statutes that say, well, certain certain authorities, certain courts are competent in ways and they're not in others. And so there is the delineations of distinction and differences that have to be kept track of. That if if I was property, and, and again, there's a proof for that, that you're a property. Like I so said, be careful. If you don't know about property, you probably are because the presumption is you're an article in commerce at one level, uh, then how, how, how can I possess property? If I am property, how do I possess property? And if, we, if I am property, what's the limit then on those, no matter who they are, who profess to be an authority, a power, a real power, the word power here. And I want to point out something, notwithstanding... Let, let me get over one more example, maybe, to help people, because it seems to go... Okay, you go to the federal courts, you go to every court, they're in all equity jurisdictions anyway. And this is the thing that you, most people miss anyway. But uh, an equity jurisdiction, okay, well, they're admiralty. And we all go to all kinds of stuff to identify how we're an admiralty court. We'll go to the rules, and it'll tell you it's a dang admiralty court. But I've told you before, when you find yourself in a jurisdiction, 
Do you understand about it enough to work within it? Because they're treating you like that anyway. And Admiralty is a very interesting one because that goes in international law about immediately. In fact, its originations are in how, intera- how the nations interacted because they had to go over the oceans. And so Admiralty is a very interesting problem. And uh, it is sitting in the federal courts. And uh, those of us who've studied this for a long time, years and years ago, uh, when they combined equity and Admiralty uh, in reading about it, they had a very difficult time in doing it because ec- Admiralty is a very interesting unique type of jurisdiction. But equity allows the judge to decide based on the facts of the law applied. And there is, I've said, I've told you before, that equity operates in the absence of law. And that's exactly where all the courts went to. So when you would look at that, you say, well, in Admiralty, everyone gets beat down because that's what everyone talks about. They get beat down. I've told you, do you know about the remedies and statuses in Admiralty? And if you don't, why are you just listening to part of the story? We went back a long time ago to ask, well, where are the rules in, the 19, in 1938 when they joined Admiralty and Equity ru- laws, uh, rules, excuse me. We wanted to know what, yeah, I wanted to see, we asked for production of, of the rules prior to 1938 in the, in the conglo- in, when they combined them. We have never ever, and I say we, me and my colleagues who did it then have never ever received an answer over where the prior rules are. They do not want you to see those. Because once you start reading them, you'll understand where their source is and how to defeat it. Uh, So, you find out that the current rules of the federal procedures are, in part, those admiralty rules already, but some didn't fit, like Rule 9 is one that didn't fit. They had to make a special rule about it. But where did the uh, rules come from? Uh, Well, the last time we could check is they were last amended in 1925, so we demanded those, but we've never had them. But they are, since they were combined in the rules, you're what you're looking at them, right in those federal courts. So you say, oh, I'm in an admiralty court. Uh, what does that mean? You take on a big old attitude about it. That or you're, you're defeated in admiralty. Well, did you ever go look at the remedies in admiralty? You ever go look at what the source of those remedies come from? You ever go look, when I keep telling you about the two points in them that look like a pretty nasty thing in the, in the United States Constitution, that maybe you want to look inside that a little bit clear, care, more careful. They teach, they teach us that, that if we look at the uh, letters marquee and patent, you ever look at those folks. That's why we can't be a United States government cannot, uh, cannot agree to pat piracy because that's what that is. Well, there's another side of that. And that's all in Admiralty too. And I don't want to say too much about more. And if you're not looking into each jurisdiction and seeing what the remedies of each jurisdiction are, or how to remain, or to avoid them, you're missing the whole picture about what you're being told by anybody who's reading strictly on how much power the system has created and how many how many authorities they have to beat you down. If you go to Admiralty, you're in international law. Have you read that? Have you read anything about that? Have you read about remedies in law? Have you met? I tell you about the war. You go look about the war remedies. Who in the war is not susceptible to a uh, well? One of the belligerents would be the power. The power with the process, the power to hurt you. Who has an immunity? Most for the most part, you can be called in, but your your avoidance is the immunity, if I can call it that way. There's another word for immunity under um, uh, under international law and admiralty. What is it, folks? Do you know? And if you don't know, then you're not going to hear and understand how to listen to people who will talk about all the research they've done uh, and the things you'll go read, and you won't understand that there's another mind that you have to put on when you're reading through these things, and it's the things they really don't talk to you about, but is the basis from which the rules were made. And I've told you before, you you walk through these jurisdictions and they tell you they have many hats. Don't forget who's running this system. It's all the same organization. It's international. Right? This is all you gotta, don't forget that. They're running the scam through the same, same organization. When they say they wear many hats and they can change the hats at a moment's notice, depending on what you're saying, have you understood what that meant and how to work it? And if you haven't, are you just giving in to the occupier? And when I tell you that there's remedies, and I tell you that there's ways to proceed within any jurisdiction, and that's how, how you proceed, otherwise they treat you like the one that you've decided your, your fear comes on you, and you start not communicating the proper way, you're not going to take benefit for, for what is available in those jurisdictions. I'm not saying I agree with it, I'm saying that's the reality. 
For those of you on the red pill, stop taking the pill. Blue pill, rainbow pill, stop taking the pills. Get behind the woodshed, learn what you have to do to get to take these people to task that are inside what looks to be a government that's been adulterated. That's not government. That's an occupation. Let me uh, point out something. If I'm property, I can't I can't obtain property. And yet I know, as someone who's a who uh, is dealing in property law, land is uh, soil is conveyed, and soil soil uh, as land improved soil is conveyed. And I also know by the laws that are the function and principles of all that that it's conveyed to someone who can receive it. How can I be property in that context? How can I be strictly within in the conveyance and disposal of that soil, how can I be under admiralty? And if I am under admiralty, then what status do I have that I could bring to bear if all there is is an admiralty jurisdiction or all there is is some administrative jurisdiction? That if we get into a mindset that we keep reading documentation that looks how, and it is awesome, it's an awesome power that they've created for themselves, if you're not listening for the exceptions, what I identified pretty quickly in the mining law and property in the, in the United States Federal Codes and in the state codes as well as savings clauses, why are those there? If the government is all-powerful, not government, government's an inert framework. If those in government who have the so-called power, how'd they get it, first of all, but over what and where's the limitation, if there was supposed to be a limitation, why aren't we seeing the limitations is another question. But if they're limited... Why haven't they just stolen everything already? If they're not, excuse me, if they're not limited, why are they? Why haven't they just stolen everything? Oh, well, everyone will say, well, they have. Well, that's because you haven't been someone who you needed to be. How are they not stopping from stealing everything? But they are. They can't. They can't steal everything. Why? Because there's these limitations. And it doesn't matter what jurisdiction you're in. If you go find the status that's, so, I don't even like using the word immune because it's not immune from having to answer for it. But once it comes, it can avoid. Once you have the status that can avoid, why don't you know that? And why would you listen to people who just tell you it's like you're done? The authority is just too powerful. They have all the power. You're a, you're, a, you're a piece of property. You have no rights, or you only have the rights gave to you. And you understand, I'm, I'm one of the few, if not the first one, to bring to you that in a certain status... You have only the rights to pay exactions of every kind. So understand I'm coming from a very broad spectrum analysis and review and comprehensive approach on how to look at all these things and still pass through them. And it's back to that narrow path. And it's looking for the exceptions. And not the ones that are empowering the, 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 the people in the government to hurt you. The ones that show that you can't. Now, I want to show a proof, and I was, I'm not going to go too much. I really have trouble, folks. A lot of people take what I would say. They don't understand what I'm saying, and they go think it's, and it's a cool stuff. It's a lot of cool stuff, but it's like a, uh, it's like handing a, a, a child a loaded gun. It's really a problem. And I don't mean that to belittle anybody. I just see the evidence of this and the experience of it is just something I can't hand people. The, this, they think it's an answer, and it's not. You, because we're up against a criminality. That's why. Otherwise, law would speak in the first instance, and I wouldn't be talking to you. But we have a criminal immense amongst us, and it looks like government. It's not lawful, but it sits there. And it has and it has sway, and it has control. And at that point, maybe you are a property in the way they treat you. But that's more of an occupied people. And we've got two, consistent, uh, two things, two conditions in an occupation under international law. that You either succumb, and, and that becomes conquest, or you overthrow, you throw out the occupier. That's the only two choices under international law. When you get into a jurisdiction, you either accept that jurisdiction, or you avoid it. Not evade, but avoid it. You avoid it because there's a condition or status that it can't reach, or it can't touch. And so let me bring up an example here, something I was hearing last week talking about. And I'm listening to the thing about every minute or so. I'm th my mind goes... I didn't hear it come out, but I heard an accept, a non-applied exception that would not not bring up the outcome of what the statement was being talked to. If you understood that this condition sits there as a limitation upon what sounds to be very authoritative, and I said, don't deny the authority, but don't give it more than uh, than it deserves. In other words, it's like taxes. Your your duty is to pay as little as possible. 
for those that are subject. And I've said, within that jurisdiction, which appears to be absolutely an admiralty, and it absolutely, absolutely seems like a plunder, but it's not in a way either, because you take on the status that was subject anyway. But if you don't walk in there and talk to the right way, and you don't show the, the, the due process, why is due process, if the government's all powerful, why is due process a problem for them? It may be the only and last problem, but it's still there. If these people were that are in government using the government as a cover, which would be a felony and a treason, if that's the case, it's, it's an unlimited power, why don't you see unlimited destruction? Is that there's, these things still seemingly work until that day, and just enough. They can't make this thing too wild before people start standing up. Well, it didn't take much for me and my colleagues and probably some of you out there to see there's something messed up. But we went, we keep going the next step. What do we do about it? And what do you do about a bank robber who got a gun in your face, holding the bag, and you're saying, you know, that was a crime what you done. And they say, so what? What are you going to do now with a gun in your face? What are you going to do? And this is sort of what the government has got turned into, a, a structure that has been infiltrated by people who are destroying the very nature of what it was actually there for. Now, if a government was all-powerful, if admiralty was all destruction and power and tool by the king or the government or the, na or the nation and the, uh, the power, it would be a military power, the admiralty, admiral is military, if you didn't understand how connected this all works. Uh, let me show you that even if you, if you thought and you believed you're a property, which I can show you that you are, it depends on the status, that you had no rights, which I can tell you that you have, which your rights were to pay exemption of every kind, which I can show you, but you have no actual contract or you work against presumptions, which I can show you is all working against you. How still do you survive in that in that battlefield? It is a it is a no wonder that no one more, not many more focus, if anybody focuses on. I want to show you a limitation on the authority that sits right in and on your soil. That would doesn't matter, and and it it just and for those of you that think I go into the system, or I would advise going into the. I'm saying they're pulling you into the system. You better have a defense against it or an avoidance. More importantly, and more properly, the avoidance. I'm not saying you go in. You're going to be pulled in. It may be a violation of law, but who are you going to call? And so you better start understanding what's going on, and you better understand it from a very very high level position in the law that they don't recognize because they're the criminal, but that that you can hold them to not by your opinion not by your misinterpretations of all the research of, and listening to someone who may have had it wrong and tells you that you agree with. I see this all the time. Congressional Research Service for the con Congress, they get it wrong on land law, uh, uh, public land and public domain uh, and these disposal and these grants. They get it wrong all the time. And so if you're reading those documents without a brain in your head to figure out, wait a minute, they're not talking right here. They're giving the wrong message and then have the answer for that if you can't do that there, you can't do that everywhere, you're going to be one of those people that gets sucked in, and you're going to have the attitude you can't, you can't avoid it, or you can't uh, be, prevail into it, and that they have, are all powerful, and you just give up and don't do the right thing, or you just start doing the wrong thing. You're like in finger, Chinese finger cuffs and you squirm. If the, if the government was all powerful, if you were property and could not receive property, if the conveyances were just subject to the takings clause or the eminent, do, uh, not eminent domain, the um, po police power, why would this statute be involved saying that that government or those governments have no power, absolutely zero power no matter what jurisdiction? Why would this be stated? And I'm only going to say it, read it in part. That no suit shall be maintained to set aside, count, cancel, amend, annul, or otherwise affect a patent to lands issued by the United States or this state, or to compel any person claiming or holding under each patent, such patent, to convey the lands described therein or any other portion of them. If the government is all, if admiralty was all powerful, if commerce law was all powerful, why shall no suit be maintained? Remember, this is despite the fact that the Constitution says there's an eminent domain takings provision and there's also police power. They're all wrongly applied and most people don't understand them, but that's, I'm not speaking to that either. I want to ask you, even in an admiralty court, in fact, this would be in particular to an admiralty court, if you know what, see, this is a double-edged sword. I can speak to you on both sides of it. This is a prohibition against even an admiralty court, isn't it? 
It's a prohibition even against a court of equity, which is where actually you fill in the, the protection for this when one is instituted. Uh, this is even a protection against uh, against ad administrative courts, so-called. Isn't it? No suit shall be maintained. If the government is all power to, powerful in any of its jurors, even under its police power, even under martial law, why shall no suit be maintained? And any any interference becomes a suit maintained. It's an issue. And I, I want to point this out to people so that you start learning. You have an ear that you must develop to hear. The qualifications to everything you're told that may not make that so in particular instances. And so you don't listen to these great works of people pulling information together and think that there's a, just no nothing to do. That's on your action side. When you do this and you walk up against someone that will recognize that no suit shall be maintained, that's how I tell you how fast you're finding a criminal. That's a different problem. And so I wanted people, because it started it wore on me you know, all this last week. I've been, I've been hearing more and more of this. It came up a long time ago. It came up within the context of people looking for, you know, good. I'm not saying anybody's bad doing this. I'm saying we want this problem stopped. And we tend to want to believe certain things. We tend to want to throw uh, throw a lot into it because we want the pain to stop. But And I'm not liking even the fact that we have to communicate about any of this or that there is a communication that's not recognized in the first instance, in this case, that no suit be, be shall be maintained against a patent in the United States or what it does, the rights are pertinent to that. Because this is happening all the time. But if you don't listen for these savings clauses, these statutes, if you don't know what's in the black and white, that the other side is supposed to and has to, uh, to their li private liability. If you don't know that, you don't know how to listen to what someone's fine research might point out without that. That when I hear lots of works of research, my mind is going, wait a minute, you didn't, okay, that's right, but that doesn't work in this context. That's correct what you just said there, but you didn't say this point that would stop that. In this point, as example, someone would talk about, oh, you can't, you can't receive a, you're a, you're a property. You're entitled to, exa you're only deemed exactions of every kind. When you don't assert your proper status, then you are. When you assert that you are a patentee, a grantee of a patent, or the assign, more importantly, within the context of this subject matter, there shall be no suit maintained against it or you. Why don't you know that? To know that it doesn't matter what the title, the fringe flag in the court, or the title, or your status that they impose. It's a fraud. Now you got them again on a felony. Uh, you have them on, on fraud on the court, which is not fraud. You have them right at the due process that this, the last vestige of anything we have to us is that they provide, they, the occupier, has to deprive some sort of lawful due process. When their instruction is that no suit shall be maintained, and I find these these uh, I find these savings provisions everywhere. You cannot enter into a research and think that the power is all that what you're dealing with is an all powerful jurisdiction, no matter what label you put on it. And I want you to be aware of that. I want you to start thinking. Don't just listen to uh, or read with an absent mind, like you're being told something. There's more information out there that you have to actively engage in what you're listening to. You have to qualify in your mind. Like I tell you, if you have an argument with me, uh, and we got another thumbs down on the on the YouTube, yay, I got another thumbs down, but you know what? You wasted it because you didn't go into the comments and explain yourself so I can understand what your take is. You wasted it. For those of you that have been commenting, I do appreciate it. A handful of comments uh, appreciate your information. Um, uh, I, I didn't respond last week for a couple of them. Uh, it just gets beyond me too fast, but I appreciate your comments uh, to uh, maybe fill in even more. I mean, there's just so much I talk, I can talk about that I don't. Sometimes, like the names don't come to me. Like I told you, I don't. I understand the principle behind it. I know I saw the documents that proves it. If you found the name in the document, then great. You copy that part because it's there to prove to you and anybody else that wants to see it. The, the the very things I'm telling you, it's not that I'm wrong. I just have wasn't as complete as I would like to be in the context of this broadcast, which is on the fly. It's listening, except for what I just read to you. 
I don't have a script for you folks. I don't have it except for my tabs that keep me tracking. I don't have a, a real guidance. It's just I just re-remind myself as I go in the in the in the instance. So I want to get back to the point that I'm listening, and this is why I don't listen too long for to cert to to lots of people in general, and I listen longer to those people I respect. But even within the context of product of producing valid compilations of 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 um, sources, documentable sources. Those sources are not necessarily qualified, and they're not actually, they're just another guy's opinion or a gal's opinion, actually. They're not actually, in application, all-encompassing law, rule, or control. And so I just want to bring this out. Even if I'm in an admiralty court, can the court maintain a suit against this patent? And this is only one example, folks. Don't get, don't get focused on just this thing, and don't get a lot of questions in your mind. Just look at the fact of the black and white. I didn't make this up. This was a statute coming out of a state's legislature that says that its courts, whatever those courts are, whatever hat that court would wear in its establishment or the judge in its competence, even in a general jurisdiction. And I've told you, I've read Benedict's on Admiralty. It, it, had the, it had the penal statutes of the state in there almost verbatim. I was shocked. So I understand this connection that people want to put on Admiralty and how pervasive it is. I'm saying, I'm asking you to be considerate of the fact that it's not so all-powerful as to take everyone out. Under international law, an Admiralty court cannot take out a particular status in, uh, that, that I have in my mind. And I don't want to say, I want you to research it. That's why I'm not going to tell you. I want you to understand what you're doing, not just be told what you think you're doing. This same status I can see right here in this statute. No court shall be maintained shows you the limitation on government. And when you see a trespass upon this, when you see the, the destruction of this, you know you're dealing with a criminal who's using the office for cover another crime. And that's how you start going after these people privately. Now, I'm speaking to a system that's been almost conquered at this point by the occupier as well. And that's why I say we do have some trouble. It's not an answer. I tell you, there's no solution in the war. There's no silver bullet you can fire to kill the beast, the zombie, whoever you think is the big bad wolf, whoever. Blackbeard, Admiralty, Judge, I don't know. It's, there's no silver bullet. But there is a thought process and a exception, uh, savings clauses, black and white, that you can find to show that it doesn't matter what jurisdiction. Oh, we're under uh, we're underneath a uh, administrative uh, obstruction uh, to justice. The bureau rats, as I call these people. Well, we got to go to the other side. What other side? It's really not a side. It's just another thing that comes at you. Go look inside the administrative section, and you'll see there's a limit to the authority. So, if any jurisdiction claims to have to be all-powerful, or you're told that they're all-powerful, and they can do the, the, the chapter and verse on the fact that it appears that it, there's no escape, I'm telling you, you're interpreting the problem wrong, and you haven't found those things that are the limit to that jurisdiction. And I ask you, if you're going to go have to go against any jurisdiction, because you will eventually, that you understand their limitation, and you put yourself in the status that is the limitation. And understand, let me point out something else. I used to hear lots of terms going on. And if you, see, I just traded, uh, I just turned this, what status is usually put in this. I put you in here, as I talked about, this patent to lands. And lands is not soil. Lands is also the improvement and the appurtenances. So this is a bigger issue going in a patent to lands. And this savings clause is on all kinds of things that you do. But if, if this is a patent to lands, and you have access to that, and no suit shall be maintained, how do they have an, a, 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 an? How does any jurisdiction have a right to maintain a suit, even an administrative one under challenge? This is a limitation to the judiciary, by the by the legislature, and the executive acknowledges it by the legislature not giving to the executive administrative side the power to affect that grant. In other words, if you look very carefully, and you're, you should find this, on your, these are all pretty universal, they're model lacks. 
the, the contested case, defi the definition for contested case will not allow the administration or the officers within that forum the power to alter the patent. It falls short. If you take on the idea of a, uh, the identity, the status of an assignee to the patent, they can't, they have no power to affect on the administrative side. There's no power delegated that can, and the judiciary side can't maintain the suit. Where is the process to affect you, even if you find yourself in a commercial court, an admiralty court? You know, admiralty is just the, the commerce of the ocean underneath the admiral. See, to me, it's not a big deal. It's just finding out where are we at and how we're going to move. What's the underlying procedural laws and, and things, immunities that are built into the system? Now, when I tell you that this statute, patent to lands that you're an assignee, I forgot to tell you a very important clue that other people might tell you is your destruction. Another status with the same name. The assignee can be tracked back through the law to be a certain multi-term, a multi-word term. That sounds just like another peon in the world that's inside the 14th Amendment, inside the destruction, uh, giving rights to the freed man as the white citizens to pay exactions say, say, uh, of every kind. It's the same term, and yet they happen at different times chronologically, and they have different capacities. Let me call your attention to the hundred and more that I've told you, and it's probably like this in every statute in every state, the term person has more than a hundred definitions under state statute. One, word, one term has more than a hundred definitions. And what's the point? The point is they have a hundred definitions because each it's compartmentalized. The term is relative only to the when that, that uh, term is used in the section of the code that's been put in there. If one term can have hundreds, I would say now, the last time I counted was 128, that was 20-something years ago, Hundreds of definitions relative to a subject matter relative to what that meant. Why would you think any other term could be limited so? That when I tell you you're an assignee to a public, uh, land, the patent to a land cannot be maintained a, uh, maintained a, a, um, a suit against, and the assign of that is protected by that because there's no suit that shall be maintained. Do you know when I say you're the assign that can accept? that it came from a patent that was issued and conveyed by the government that determined this other term that everybody will just, just, it's like the Black Plague. It's called a citizen of the United States. Now, how is one treated so differently under the soil disposal grant side than it is under the exactions of any kind? Should be an interesting conundrum for most of you that are listening and been studying is because they have different meetings depending on the subject matter that they're attached to. No different than person can have hundreds of definitions within the subject matter chapters. The citizen of the United States is the same thing. Otherwise, you couldn't have, the, the power would not be in the property holder. The possession would not be there against the whole world. So be careful on getting lulled into uh, Conditions where you believe there is nothing more you can do but be subject to these jurisdictions. When I just read you a statute that says no suit shall be maintained, that's in all jurisdictions, whether they be admiralty, commerce, contract, common law, administrative, no suit. That's a big definite, big prohibition. Like the patent lasts forever, that's a big time. Now, are we seeing that in the law of the land? Absolutely not. That's a different problem, though. But if you focus in on saying, oh, this is why we're suffering this, is this stuff right here, we can show you, oh, you're a person, you're a citizen of the United States that makes you a person liable to this exaction extortion. If you think that's the only status, and so you're defeated, and so you give up, or you fight the wrong way, or you try to invent realities, you're, that's what they wanted you to do. And so you have to have a different thought in your mind, even when you're listening to me, and you have to be able to say, hey, wait a minute, I read a case over here that said that that's not quite right, or it's not addressed like that, and then we would have to come into a dialogue, if you will, a discussion on whether or not that's actually applicable. How many times have I told you I look at these court cases, 
with the facts related to the law that we're applying, and they these attorneys bring in the stuff, it's not relevant in one regard. How would a navigable, uh, like in one case it just happened, navigable waters, what does that have to do, navigable waters and dikes, uh, levees, relative to an out-of-state plaintiff having a complaint? How would that have to do with your le- with your cause under your patent, where the where a government is coming against it, it has no relevance, no pertinent. It's a, it's a it's a document to strike. It fits all the all the all the elements for a strike strikeable uh, petition, a strikeable action on the part of the side coming at you. That action would also, in this case, if it's going against the patent land, that action alone, even if it's called the motion, is actually a suit against the petition, uh, the suit against the patent, isn't it? And so on every turn you find that they really, there's really no power. I don't care if you call it an admiralty jurisdiction. I don't care if you call it commerce. I don't care if you call it contract. I don't care what you call it. No suit shall be maintained. That's a pretty broad broad control. That if we're in any jurisdiction, and it's uh, looked on by all the research to show that it's indefeatable, then you're looking at it wrong, I guess is my point here. Listen to look for the omissions of the applicable principles that would limit that jurisdiction. There are extensions that come onto land. There are things that did happen. But if there was that extension that was absolute, why is that statute say no suit shall be maintained? Why is there a limitation if there is professed to be by research and study and case law, whatever, whatever you research, to be no limitation? And I want, okay, so it's probably enough right there. I I hope you get the point that we have to think with a different mind about all this research that we're doing and applying. And to to come, we have to come to a conclusion about it. But if you're coming to the conclusion that says, that ultimately says you're toast no matter what you do, you've misinterpreted that. Because I just read you, I just read you a statute in a state that cuts across all jurisdictional authorities. Now, let me, and I didn't mean to think about doing this because I really need to go over to the tabs, but maybe not. Uh, Quickly over to the Bundy issue. If you understand that the disposal of forage in the 1880s to the Bundy family was a disposal that moved public land into public domain status, and that for all intents and purposes the conveyance of the forage and water rights to the Bundys is as patent, as if a patent issued, because I talked to you about this before in the miners, in the 1864 case of, I think it's Swift, the court said, the Congress forbeared your use. You, 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 the Congress can't come against the miner. And, and within two years, the, the mining law pops up to give that back to the people, the miner, the citizen of the United States, who's conveyed as patent, the same patent protection as this statute says, don't touch those conveyances, tells you that that authority that's out there, I don't care what you call it, is no authority as against that condition, that subject matter, and that status. And I just told you that status is tied to a citizen of the United States. So how can I be a citizen of the United States and be a property without laws or only subject to extortion when it says no suit shall be maintained? And the, and the exaction statute says that suit said can be maintained is the conundrum that develops with if we don't potentially care, particularly care close to the details that I've been trying to show you, you need to do. But gives me now to this, as I hear more and more and more and more people talking about this thing, and using it as more of an excuse of, uh, I can't get thing anything done. I can't, oh, I can't work here. Oh, they got control and you're stuck. I said before, I've said this over and over, if you find yourself in an occupied territory, it doesn't mean you've lost. You've got a job to do now. If you find yourself in it before an admiral judge, you better figure out what he's got to to bear upon you and what he doesn't. What the other side is there to do and what they don't. If you're in a contract court and there's no real actual contract, isn't that a defense? Isn't that a fraud? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the same kind of thing. We can reduce this down to those agreements. You can reduce it down to, as I've showed you, proof. You want to get rid of that person in the state, that citizen that is subject? I've showed you how to do it. It's like proving a negative. It's kind of the most amazing thing you've ever seen. How do you prove a negative? I I told you how. Secretary of State will help you. So not only do we not have the status that is subject, 
We produce, and I think this is the key I found out for myself that I think is imperative for everyone to know, you have to find the status that you are and have available evidence that you live there. And that's why you have to get very term specific. Did I use citizen of the United States? No, but because if I did, then I'd have the confusion. What I did do is, what is my current status underneath my evidence? The evidence is the patent. It's the ultimate evidence. My status underneath that is an assign. I don't need to go to the prior uh, prior discuss, prior uh, status that got it there, because I'm not that either. I'm the assign of a grant. And there's a whole set of principal laws behind grants that defeat, that's why it defeats all jurisdictions. Because the one that's coming against you in any regard is the one that did the grant. And a grantor is a stop from every grant they give, imply, expressed or implied. I've talked to you about all this long time ago, like a, a, a court case. Fletcher versus Peck, I think it's 1906. If you have that limitation, what is this discussion that you were hopeless and helpless in any jurisdiction that may find ourselves, find their way to pull us in and abduct us into? It's something that's been wearing on me for years. I hear it more. I've been hearing it more. I hear people just don't apply what they ought to apply. They accept what they read as the fact instead of challenging it themselves. And every jurisdiction has a standing challenge you can put against it. Why would you accept defeat just on the presence of somebody's research or someone's reliance on someone else's research? As authoritative as it might be. And I said might because everything needs to be cha challenged and checked. If the Bundy people were to assert, and this is why part of that was taken down, which also shows you what jurisdiction they're not in and why they have the challenge. If they're uh, given, not if, not the if, everyone would always start ifs either, given the disposal of the forage and the water to them was the removal of the public land to, and, and conveyed it to public domain as patent. And I just showed you a statute in a different state that says no state, no suit shall be uh, uh, maintained against such patent land. As a matter of law, what court can come and take that property from them? And the fact that those people are in that court shows you how corrupt, how, well, first of all, ignorant the people are for as much constitutional law they think they know, how corrupt the system is, and the Bar Association members all, defense, prosecution, and the one in the robe, how corrupt your system is that they will deny that to them, that they're ignorant on how to collaterally attack it to show that they can't come against that property that was conveyed to them. And you're actually dealing with a breach of contract with fiduciary by the BLM to do anything. It's been my main problem with that Bundy issue. I just read you in another state, and it's going to be sister state stuff, where there shall be no suit maintained. How do you think on a federal level that the state of Nevada can maintain a suit or the federal government can maintain a suit? And then we go to the administrative side. There's no decision that the BLM could make to alter the rights of the people that offered their pa as patent rights of forage where they claimed a use even before the government did so, just like the miners did of the de year of old, of old before the mining law. How and consider that's a consideration that's being stolen at the point that these people are in are in a trial. Why don't I hear anybody even bringing that up? If if I'm wrong, why aren't anybody saying that, folks? Why did they try to preclude? They have precluded within the jurisdiction. Why aren't they collaterally attacking that outside the jurisdiction? In fact, I just told you, I filed a paper on the right of the use of the highway. They wouldn't take it within the citation. I knew that, but I wanted to see if I could get it inside the case of the citation. It's a whole little different action. I wanted to see if I could exercise that. I'm testing the system here. But I, they came back and said, no, no, you can't do that collateral action. You have, to re, you have to file that collateral to the case. And I said, okay. And, and I reframed the, for, the paperwork and we resubmitted it as a collateral attack. Why? Because it's outside of that jurisdiction. And it's a remedy against the encroachment. When they, when they mischaracterize, fraudulently characterize, traffic as an appurtenant patent right, aren't they committing fraud on multiple levels? Aren't you denied justice right from the assertion? And weren't they duty-bound to assert no suit shall be maintained? 
can't be that no matter what the flag says in the courtroom, what you think the jurisdiction title is, what the robe color the robe is, the hat the judge wears, can't be relevant to in any regard relative to what I just told you that either prohibits the interference or can avoid the authority at all. It is an authority where it has authority. It isn't where it doesn't. It's kind of like the experts say ain't reality sometimes. It's all the same scam they put on us. At any rate, I maybe went a lot longer than I thought about that. But it's so, so important that you all understand how to hear what you're here listen how to how to hear what you're listening to. I, I can tell you if you were sitting next to me while I'm listening to people, I have another conversation going. Um it it it, it it almost can get in the way of of the conversation of the of the pr- presentation because what a, one sentence may state with an objective in the presentation for a proof may not actually be so on any particular matter only in the general might it be the truth might it be the truth and that's if the sources are actually applicable accurate and properly applied and that's the how they've been taking us out. They stick you inside an issue where they get to decide it. And I've told you, don't bring an issue. Don't respond that you allow a suit against you by answering the wrong way. How do you do that? By not knowing the procedures. By not knowing how to communicate. By not doing an avoidance. In fact, in this one case where it got refiled, I have done, I just did, uh, had someone do for themselves Something I have not been able to get to do for decades. Once a couple decades now, we stopped doing it because the court stopped stopped to do uh, stopped allowing them. Once they figured out what the point was, because once you withdraw the plea, now they don't have jurisdiction again. And if you have something else going on to show that they, you can avoid it, they they realize they're going to lose it. I just had in the same the the the, the issue that uh, we could, could not file an uh, injunctive remedy through a criminal case, which is these traffic tickets. They wouldn't take it inside the case. We took it as a collateral attack. And to do so, they had to withdraw the plea. Should explain to you, at least for now, there's if that jurisdiction was absolute, they wouldn't have withdrawn the plea. If the remedy that was put in and intended to file wasn't a potential answer, whether or not you've given it is irrelevant. It's a different story. Different story about what's going on inside the criminality. They have to look, make the record looks like look like they're giving you due process. Don't ever forget that. Why would they withdraw the plea if the if whatever authority, I don't care what name you put on it, had absolute power? It is the little things that they don't tell you on that ticket. The ticket will say you got four things to do. Well, I know there's a, probably like seven or eight things you get to do. So why are they only telling you four? Well, for those inside that system, there's only four. For those that are infer- interfered with by that system, there's a handful. Whatever you want to do. And so we can believe what the authority tells us on the ticket that you only have four options. I'm telling you that there's this one here, this one statute that says no suit shall be maintained is a fifth option, isn't it? But what's the mechanism? That's in the rules. That's in the in the statutes as well. More in the law. It's actually in the law. It's in your remedies. And I've asked you, if you don't know how to pull those through, what, what who are you to talk about rights? And then who are you to complain that you have none? And I, I want to Im- encourage people to read there's limitations, that we are not enjoying those limitations, only evidence is a crime going on. We have to figure out how to arrest it. And that may be up to debate, as I say. So that's why I'm so disappointed, notwithstanding all the communication, that uh, I don't talk with uh, many people about how we might work that through. Uh, I don't know why that is. I don't know the basis for it. And I, and so it confuses me a little bit uh, for all of you all that, that are um, wanting to see must move forward. It's the same frustration I have in this Bundy issue. Why aren't simple questions being asked of inside the case of that case to expose, even with the limitations put on by the judge, you just reframe what you're after to pull out the same point. Why isn't that being done? And here's the point. It's not my opinion about, oh, I need to see a judge tell me that I'm wrong, because they will. They'll tell you that you're wrong, but they're a criminal. It's that when this black and white says they don't have authority, how are they continuing? 
is what more people need to see. Like um, Rancho42 did the research, and I haven't actually didn't get back to him on Twitter. Uh, he did the research on those statutes that show that the United States District Courts, in fact, he found out there was only, he could find the one. I don't know if he found the second. He found there's only one that's actually competent, and it's not a United States District Court, and that's right in the black and white. If all these courts were all powerful, why would there be that limitation, folks? And if there is a limitation, why isn't the the bar association members making the qualifications and doing the proper challenges? And if the people that are defendants are so knowing, so the Constitution, why aren't they putting an application? Why aren't they doing the right stuff? Oh, it's a good thing to try and cha- say you're challenging something, but you're not. Not making a record of its of the of the failure on the other side. I only th- I think only writs can do that. You can't do it through a motion. Emotion either, also. But motion is asking the court for a favor. You can't do a collateral attack. That's why we were told, no, you, we're not going to allow, we can't allow this remedy inside a, a, a ticket case which follows criminal procedure. And they came back with the right answer. That was a test, folks. They came back with the right answer. D- d- would you know to do that? And if not, why not? This is what our failure is. Yes, they've constructed a system around us that we... uh, The Matrix is not a movie. I'll just put it that way. The Matrix is not a movie. But stop taking the pills. That was another problem. Stop taking wholesale whatever you're told without a critical thought. Like I keep saying, I don't think people know how to critically think. And I wonder myself whether or not, you know, how much am I failing? But I know know something, and I, I know I can identify the limitations on the absolute. And if I can do that, that means I'm still seeing something. I guess the day I stop seeing the limitations on any authority as absolute, then I should I should either be careful or, or get my dribble cut, I suppose. And with so much going on, I'm, I'm feeling that way it's happening right now. There's so much uh, to try and keep up with uh, that people don't get right, that I spend hours and hours trying to explain that actually doesn't come out in action qu- quite correctly, almost ever. Uh, that I'm I'm being run down by by this mass of uh, lack of proper action because there's some information out there that and you hear me say it I said you got exactions of every kind and I tell you but you can identify the status for that and you can avoid that status can't you now you have to bring the evidence I don't like that that's imposed upon us I don't like that a traffic ticket is presumed to be able to interfere with an appurtenance to a patent issued by the United States government I don't like that. But that's what the criminals are doing. Do you understand how I've altered the frame of the question? It's not a, the, the point, not the question, but the issue. The issue is an appurtenant use of, of, the, of something granted in a patent, not the right to drive. Completely avoid the terminology, because that's the trap. Get out of the pills. Stop taking the pills. I don't care what color they are. Stop taking the pills. Stop taking his authority, what's actually authority, when you know a bigger thing's going on. Go find the bigger thing. So I think I'll have to stop right there. Probably makes a good amount of time. But just explain to you, in the omnipotent government, they can't go certain places. That's your clue, folks. They can't do that even underneath the military occupation. Isn't that, isn't that just a, a hoot, folks? That they do now gives you another cause, uh, actually the cause, of why you had to be there anyway. That's a different work. It it follows the same principles, but it's a different work. And as I talk to you about this, my mind actually is working in Admiralty side. And what is the status, even under war underneath the Admiral, in the court of the Admiral, what's the avoidance rights there? What's the status that, that is a buffer against the incursion and the and the in presuming you are uh, 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 one in co- with contraband. Another, another word. <laughs> All these things. Just to know and see and apply in real time and not drag yourself through the mud, your mental mud, uh, to, to try and figure out, oh, we're helpless. I, I want to, just again, if there no suit shall be maintained, you tell me in any ju- in any forum, in any jurisdiction, which which the all-powerful jurisdiction in government? Which one? Well, in this case, it must be that law of the land, that evidence, ultimate evidence against all the world, all the structures of the world, that someone who has the evidence of that as their property is their shield. 
and no suit can be maintained to even question it, including the appurtenances. So, pretty earth-shaking in my mind. And in fact, I'm just, uh, just thrilled to see all this stuff that's finally coming together, at least for myself, that just hits them on all sides, folks. It's just, it's, and I'm only doing enough. See, I already know the criminal's there. It said, I need to have all y'all not just say they're a criminal, be able to find ten ways that they're a criminal. And we need to know that as a mass of people. We need to educate the masses if we can hearken back to Thomas Jefferson's admonition about how we keep our so-called liberty. It's right there for us to do. There's lots of tools. Are we are we going to be uh, whiners or are we going to pick them up and, and, and use them as, as the weapons against the war that's against us? Uh, it's up to us. So, don't get lulled into the absoluteness of these forums and jurisdictions. Sit inside them for a bit, learn more about them, and learn how to uh, set the record to either avoid them or call them out for the trespassers or the treasonous, uh, uh, treasonous people that they are in the system. Because that's not the system. That's really not the way, at least in the United States, that's not the way it's supposed to work, what they're doing, what they've been doing, and they're getting away with it. So I thought that was pretty uh, earth-shaking to, to really see the words, again, not me, a, a, a state admits that they're not supposed to mess with a patent or the or affect its 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 effect on, on on what it does. We see it happening all the time. Look at all the code enforcement that goes on, all administrative, executive side stuff, violating the law left and right. Those people are all felons or causing treason, and the bar association is there to help it, to help it right along. They're the, they're the main occupiers, as I can tell, that actually. Because most people p- believe that what they say is the law it, it, it is what limits their mind. What people research about it limits their mind. And so we get second and third hand. Our source, our original source documentation, the documentation is actually is someone's opinion of something. But I would hope that hearing that you're not defeated, there are ways at it that we have an obstruction between us and that law of the land, and and cleanly so. And it's right there for us to see. I've been looking at this for so many of these exceptions, savings clauses, whatever you want to call them, the limitations, prohibitions. Not in the not in the Constitution, as stated by the legislatures themselves after the fact. Which is another thing you have to be aware of, of how that how that works. And only that after the fact application can't can't go back ex post facto to affect something they didn't have a right to touch. In other words, your relation back doctrine is another proof why the legislature had to tell its judiciary no suit shall be maintained. Because there's no authority we can fabricate into the future that can ever alter what the con- what Congress had declared in this uh, in this uh, federal uh, union, so called. And don't forget the commerce connection there as well. The Congress is in charge of that, right in the Constitution. They just destroyed all the regulation, authority, and code enforcement in all the states. How are then are we subject to this major slavery? It's peonage, as I found by doing some research. It's peonage, folks. We're in a worse condition today than the freed man was right before he was imposed with extortion or, or, or as a white citizen with uh, with civil rights. We are in a worse condition today. At least the freed man caught on the highway could go through the courts and force through, but it's a call crime what they did there, and then force him into working off what he's done. We don't even have that ability to work it off anymore. To show you how bad this society has, has disregarded their obligations, duty, and the ignorance that they proceed in. We can't even use the statutes that were put in place to protect the freed men. Because they were ignorant of their freedom as well. Another historic, another lesson there to learn. So, anyway, er, I think it's earth shattering for y'all. I, I don't know if you don't feel that. Maybe you're not paying attention or you, you got your mind in other places, but if you think that there's a, no limitation out there, I just read you one. Probably the biggest one you'll ever, 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 ever see in, in the way the United States government is, is set up. And despite what we see, if you don't think that's, that, that's, that's earth shaking, you, you're, Stop taking the pills. You're, you've you've over medicated yourself. Get a dose of reality behind the woodshed. That necessary dose of reality. How long has Rex Brocky brought that to me? When I asked him, I said, "What, what would you say about the broadcast?" And so he's bringing bringing you all a dose necessary dose of reality. 
And that's all, that's a hard pill to swallow for all y'all red pill takers and blue pill takers, all you rainbow handful pill pharmaceutical deniers. You're medicating yourself with the wrong stuff. Get off the pills, get behind the woodshed. Take them to task, folks. You have to have the principle in you to be able to meet it out. So, in other words, earth-shaking news, and I, I wanted to get back to this. I've totally forgot about it with you. I told you way back when, with all the rain and snow and this that had come on, there might be some earthquakes going on in uh, big ones, I was thinking, possibly, in California. I totally forgot about it, but this little story pops up to remind me, and I just want to pass this on, just for those of you that keep track. So a swarm of earthquakes beneath the San Andreas Fault is making scientists nervous. Well, I'll just tell you, consider it a bunch of gurgling. This is the hydraulics of that system working. I think there was some proof here. That's all I wanted to point out to you. doesn't mean that a big one doesn't show up, uh, but I think you're seeing the dynamic between a, a subsurface hydraulics coming through, and you're now, it took them now in this dry time. See, big drought before. It didn't come up in October. It, it came up about a month later. It finally gurgles its way and puts enough lubrication in the system with the stresses, and we're starting to get a whole bunch of uh, little earthquakes, about 134 uh, in an area around Monterey County. That's about the right, right south of San Francisco. Okay, that's right where all that snow came down, wasn't it? And so, just a, not a proof, just an observation. It's what I used to see, and I didn't know how this was going to respond. Put that in your little calculators of how the Earth dynamic works. Understand water. Water's an interesting thing. It comes from all over the place. In this case, it's almost identifiable from the, uh, in time, from what happened in this last year uh, to, till now. And now we see the Earth starting to get lubricated and starting to unstress itself. And I hope that it doesn't do a big one. Hopefully all this does, in this case, it's not like a, a subduction zone. It's more of a adjustment a period for stresses. And it, it keeps it pretty well leveled out. So maybe this is getting rid of uh, the uh, the factor in the, in, the, in the San Francisco Bay Area. But we don't know. We don't know what the external, what the area is just external to what this hydraulic uh, evidence shows might be go should be going on. Uh, is right at the edges of that could be where there might be some, some problems. Just to let you know, this is a, this kind of confirms to me. I, I had forgotten all about it. Wanted you to just to see here here that it's, it's there's a dynamic in the world. It's natural. It can be observed, whether or not the scientists want to see it, or whether they come late to the to the thing and want to scare you beforehand. Um, another uh, earth sh shattering thing on the internet, virtual a virtual earth shake, is uh, net neutrality maybe going away. And I wanted to touch this just quickly. I don't know why I want to touch this because I asked you to do it. All you all, all you 420 uh, enjoyers uh, had DEA having a take comment taking. I didn't hear anybody making a comment, so I don't even know what I'm talking about here. I mean, I don't even know why I'm even mentioning this uh, because you didn't respond on on that, and and so why would you respond on this? But uh, the net neutrality is going to be uh, removed. Uh, in other words, that the corporations are going to be the the main backbone people can delineate how much bandwidth and to where all their infrastructure goes, and to invest new money in newer infrastructure, which is really higher, uh, com it'll be higher profit to them. I just wanted to make comment to you the fact that the FCC chair releases plans to deregulate ISPs. I don't want to get into all of this. This is not a good thing, but I don't like the fact that they're in it at all either. Uh, there, there ought to be just an equal access thing that the, that's enforced, uh, not a, not a no, no access, or not a preferred access. Because it really is on the the public highway, and it's using easements of the public highway as as a um, what's it called a franchise. So we we have already some regulation in it, but but the the lifting of this and the handing uh, the decisions on who gets what to the corporations based in their profit incentives it doesn't sound like a good thing. However, now so my point is, if you're interested in this net neutrality, you better get your comments in. Don't know why I'm telling you that, because you're not you're not really doing too much that I hear anyway else in all these other administrative things. But this is how they control your life, and you sit like crickets, and then you complain about how, oh, well, I can't download my YouTube now. Oh, and then you think that they're not going to download your YouTube because they look at your history, and they know they don't want you to see the stuff you've been watching. And so you, you, you think that you thought that the censorship was happening by all the YouTubers that are being knocked out, when you don't realize, you start getting less and less capacity as the people who run the Internet don't want you to see certain stuff. But there was a, so that you can respond to, uh, and consistent with that on something totally different, it was called the, grad, uh, they called it a tag, a graduated student tax. I'll have a link for you. Came through Twitter, someone named Chris Marciano, Marcicano, excuse me. Uh, he delineates in 19, uh, 
a 19 tweet thread, his strategy as being someone who used to do this lobbying, his strategy for how he would go after the graduate uh, graduate student tax. And I wanted to offer this because if you apply this to other things, it was a list of points. Those of you that are involved and want to be involved and want to help to do something on the legislative side to be the voice, that, that resounding no, let's say, for net neutrality, he gives a list of things that you might consider to do that I thought was uh, it was organized up. It was uh, it seemed straightforward enough. It seemed to be how you do things. If I was going to be approaching that uh, after seeing the fact, I think he hits the points that uh, I want you to have that as a link. You're going to get this in the broadcast, or I won't read go through and read it. He lays out on this subject of uh, graduate school tuition waiver tax. If you apply what he's saying on how to look at who's going to be doing what. Who to approach, you can refine your energy, consolidate your energy, and focus on who you need to contact, how you need to contact, and why. And you could develop yourself into a group of people uh, in, in any cause, net neutrality, the, the pot, uh, the, the, the cannabis uh, health thing, any of this stuff, Kratom, whatever. Uh, you could organize yourself up and, and get people in the right places to do the things uh, that that I think in this multi-dimensional attack uh, war against you, you have to return an attack. And if you don't, those that do win. And that's the simple fact. So with this net neutrality is going to be, as I told you, capacities to limit your access to your stuff. We, we already hear there's intel inside. They didn't lie. Intel inside, a big hole that now has its own programming. The firmware already has its own programming, its own operating system within your computer to go after this controlled structure of the Internet. As I told you, Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars was advancing, even though maybe not in so many words. And they're going to have you plug yourself in, and you'll do so willingly, have complete now proof of all this. We have, how do they start enforcing all this drag, it's a dragnet of information and the invention of things, and the handing to corporations of the decisions on how they do this without much oversight at all, which is really what the government was kind of supposed to sit in the gap, not allow the, the criminals, the organized criminals, to take advantage. It's had nothing to do with everything running right. It has to do when it's not, it's when it's not running right, or it gets taken advantage of. Uh, police are using DNA mugshots to arrest innocent people, speaks to the power that this new digital age has, that uh, they use DNA imaging or phenotyping to guess what a suspect's physical characteristics might be. They you get this information based on, it's a public-private partnership, some company boasting they can do this. It's never been peer-reviewed. But this is the kind of thing I've been telling you. You start watch, If you don't set up to stop this nonsense with this smart Internet of things, uh, that's coming down. The network's set up to do all this. This is the kind of things that they create, and now you're having the proof I told you that you may not, you may be innocent, but there's people out there that will construct, fabricate models that can incriminate you at an authoritative level. And here's one of the first evidences that gets you down to the DNA imaging. They get, they get your DNA, folks, somehow. Or they get DNA that they fabricate and attach to you. And they've falsified that it's for you. Like I told you, you can prove a negative. They just give a name and they say, that's you. And you say, okay, I'll answer. And you answer into and not avoiding a problem. That we now have the proof that someone's proclaiming that they can get DNA mug shops, they call snapshots, of alleged suspects or victims. Boy, they got the whole world covered. Now, they haven't been proved to be accurate. They've been proved to be inaccurate. But this is what's coming. I want to remind you some old news. I, an old, old news. Notice I told you these DNA we, uh, snapshots that they can, like Minority Report, predict what you would look like. They make it up, folks. They tell you they call. They they make it up, and you become the suspect. Don't forget these two little, these three little tidbits. That Israel Israeli scientists prove DNA evidence can be fake. I've been talking to you. This reports for years back. I'm telling you folks, it's, it's all the writings on the wall. You though that sit back and say, oh, well, I got nothing to hide. I'm telling you, it's going to, it's not about what you hide. There's nothing you can hide. They fabricate. They're doing it in these cases. They fabricate an ID. 
They stick it inside a system that's a regulable entity doing an activity that you didn't know anything about, and they attach it to you, and you say, okay. Instead of saying, hey, that's a fraud, here's the proof, and you don't have the right. And if you continue, you're a criminal. Israeli scientists prove DNA evidence can be faked. Now, let's go back to that other thing. What did I say? It says the news is, the notice to us is, police are using DNA mugshots to arrest innocent people. You think? You think this is writing on the wall? Let's get on to the next one, the Israelis. This band of criminals. Israelis create DNA wire for computer of the future. DNA wire for computer of the future. What did I say, folks? The Intel inside. They're telling us, and it's now admitted, Intel's making chips that have their own OS. Do you think this DNA with the computer inside could be attached to that DNA that they fabricate, that the DNA that the company makes to identify an innocent man or woman is not what they set up to tell about you? And it's an operating system within the sample of evidence that somebody, some bar member, claims and some prosecutor uses to indict innocent people. I don't think it's too far out to think is already going on. Israel police skirt law create migrant data, DNA database, should, on that prior evidence, terrify you. Who's not a migrant, folks? I told you, relative to the United States authority, the guard, the district, you're all migrants in and out of that place. You're immigrants from it if they continue to be a business there in that locale under the bunk, Buck Act or by use of a zip code, or a business entity. They've got you dead to rights here, folks, and no one knows actually what to look at when they see this stuff. Israeli police skirt the law. This is Israeli police skirt the law? Upskirting? These perverts? Why would police skirt the law? It has to be a problem for you. Don't laugh. Oh, we all know they're crook. No, that's not my point, and you don't, don't miss the point by sounding off and being funny, because it's funny, but it's not funny. Of course they skirt the law. They are. They're, they're violators. They're police, no doubt. They're not law peace officers, are they here? Israeli police skirt the law. Why would you incorporate these people and anything they have to say in your world? It's being imposed on you. Police can request your DNA without your knowledge or consent via ancestry websites. Did you know that? They don't need a war. The, the companies are saying that they try to fight it, but they don't really have any teeth, and they do what they can. But those of you that are doing those DNA tests, all your DNA and all these databases are going in to do what, folks? To make suspects and victims up. Th these stories terrify me. I read this stuff when I see what I see and see how it's come about, how fast it's coming about, and I get people arguing with me whether I'm right or wrong, and the fact of it's in reality. I'm not making this up. And if I am making it up, why is it becoming the future now? It's, I'm beyond, I mean, it's so beyond me on this stuff, I'm terrified at one level. And yet I'm fortified to see that it's happening, and these people are criminals. And that's what was up to us to stop. It made it obvious. They're not. It's not like they're coming secret. That would have been the worst thing that could have happened if they would have kept everything silent. Somewhere they decided to let it out. And we've been we've been enjoying that knowledge now in the last ten years, roughly. Police can request your DNA. Well, you think it might be some fake DNA? Do you think they might use this other company that hasn't been tested and can't be? This is like fingerprints. You can't really prove anybody with it. They're also finding the DNA can't prove you, and yet it's being purported that it can. The courts are going to pick this up because they want to make anybody a criminal. That they need to make a criminal. And I hear crickets. I hear crickets on all of this stuff. And yet they're telling us exactly. The Internet of Things, they can fabricate DNA. They get your DNA online. You give it to them. They get it off of wherever else they're going to get it. They get it wherever they need to get it. They collect it up. Why do you think the state laws that say they can take your blood is about? National, global, forget that national, global databases. Israel is involved. If, we ever, if you don't think this is an Israel-centric uh, control structure, you're missing another point. You got it, folks? They're ahead of us. Globally. They got all of us. Globally. I, don't fa I can't fathom it, but they got us. And yet they don't have all of us. And I'm not talking about just the ones that say, oh yeah, we understand it, so that makes it good. No, it doesn't. You have to step up. 
Google admits it tracked user location data even when the setting was turned off. Oh, should I say no, duh? What did I say? I, I said, I, I, if I can't have root of my phone, and even then I could be hacked, then something else is going on and I can't know about it. The proof that Google does evil. They admit it. I don't have to now say it's not my opinion. They admit it. I told you that, folks. These Android phones are the thing you accept to plug in. Apple's the same way. Don't pods or impodments. All iPodments, all of them. They're all the same. Silent Weapons Quiet Wars, they got you by the throat already. They're telling you they'll use your DNA. They'll use all this bio, biometrics to control and anticipate what you are. Oh, that tracking. Well, what? let's see. How does that work? Well, I can now fabricate you walking by this other guy we want as a target to fabricate some altercation by location. And I have the evidence. I go to Google. They hand it over to me. I hand them a bunch of cash. I got you dead to rights, and you're just a guy I don't like. And little Missy over there, you walk right by him. Just the right time. Thank you very much. We made you the victim. And then I'm going to talk to you to insist that you're going to be the victim. Like that just came out too. Cops, I think eight or nine cops, went after a woman who'd been raped to tell her not to make the report. And I understand maybe she didn't do it except that the story got out. All this is right here. It actually, ter I just think about that. It terrifies me. It's not like I, I'm not terrified for me. I'm terrified for us. Android phones gather your location data and send it to Google. Okay, I told you that these phones are concentrated evil. I said they're going to get smaller. I told you they're going to go down to the driver's license side. You're not going to even have to worry about it. They make it so easy. You're going to be integrated. And I don't see anybody stopping this. The people that are the, the culprits in the corporations, using corporations to cover their felonies that are justified by the system because there's some greater good in security, and you haven't challenged that, is how we're being taken down. Here's the evidence. This is not news to me. I told you this before. This is the notice that's confirmed they're saying it now. Do you believe them? Do you care? Another story, Google collects Android users' locations even when location services are disabled. How do you control this when you don't make the system? Is the Internet of everything and your system as well. You go, do you think going down and filling out an application doesn't do the same thing in a, in a more... Uh, uh, slow manner, but just as proof, it goes and gets becomes digitized. So you're being tracked and traced, like I've been telling you all. You're doing it through the electronic devices that you willingly pick up. You're being biometrically identified. And understand of where I started this. There's companies out there believing they can anticipate what you look like from data, just like I told you they're going to do it. And they can make a victim, or they can make uh, they can believe they have uh, 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 the criminal. Facial recognition is tracking customers at the sh at the, as they shop in stores, temp tech company says. And you read this story and you realize it's all about the bottom line. And then as an afterthought, oh, it might even actually help the customer. We can use it to help the customer. This is not what it's about, folks. You can't go anywhere. When the court case, I told you this, when the court cases said that you weren't have a right, have your... Uh, your identity, your face, or anything, not collected up. I told you that was the fall. That was the way that they were coming after you. This is wherever you go in public does not have the expectation of privacy. And they tell you, as a, as a, it's a cynical little answer. Well, you don't have to go anywhere, do you? See, that's the lie. At one level, I understand that you have no right to privacy, but in fact, it, does that extend to the use of what that information is? I don't think so. And now you see now why they go there. They did, they did this years and years ago to set up their ability to start doing all this now. They collect up your information. And I want you to think about that. Is that tying to a database for the DNA and all the stuff you've been putting into the computers or the stuff they've been hijacking out of your system with Intel inside or your phones or the stuff that they can get from you or that you volunteered otherwise? Absolutely. Now I want to go back again. This is a big deal to me. They say they can take this data, be it DNA data. The Israelis say they can make a DNA computer. They take all this data and they claim to be able to tell you about you. More importantly, tell someone else with the authority to put you in a cage about you. 
and everybody makes a profit. And this story tells us what's going on there. Uh, you can't go anywhere now. And this kind of puts up a bond. When they start finding your DNA, think about the pharmaceuticals. Think about the medicines that they're doing. Think about how they can now determine what they need. They think that you need uh, based on your DNA. Well, they might actually be able to control you uh, also through your doctors. So they're all tied in. This what Obama scare, the Trump scare, all tied in, folks. It's global. That we now come to this story as well. All AI, all digital, what they call AI. I don't agree with it, but that's uh, what they're calling it. And uh, people have, apparently are embracing it. AI-controlled brain implants for mood disorders tested in people. Sounds cool. You can take people with, with brain disorders, mood disorders, and fix them. Do you want that, folks? Maybe at the worst level, people, maybe they would want that, but well, why wouldn't they? Take Stop the pain. I want the fix. Here they talk to us. The AI-controlled brain, brain implants for mood disorders are tested in people. And guess uh, none other than DARPA is actually running preliminary trials of so-called closed-loop brain implants that use algorithms to detect patterns associated with mood disorders. You know, that's tied to behavioral. This whole thing is behavioral controls. If you don't read in this story what they're, what they're beginning to do now, you know, they talk to you about some limitations here, but those are, my, my, when I read this story, my the only thing that fit, immediately came in my mind was a movie, and I don't see many movies, and I don't remember lots of them, but what flashed in my mind was the movie, uh, see, and I'm, Darn it. I had it right in my mind. I should have just said it. Huh? Instead of talking so much. Anyway, it started with a B. Darn it. So I might catch back up to me. It's an old 1983 movie, Brainstorm. Thank you very much. It only took a little while. Where they take and they read from your mind what you're doing and they can record it. And they can play it back to you. Was what came to my mind when I saw this. And then I tied it to that story about the facial recognition in the stores and the algorithms that say they can identify you and who you are. And I don it dawned on me, they already have microwave technology to specifically affect your mind now. We already have the stories there, and I couldn't find it quick enough to bring it up here. But I didn't see much distinction between Brainstorm and that capacity in this issue where they think AI can adjust your mood. And where does the line then drop if you're out in the public that you've now made yourself susceptible to being considered a, brain, um, a behavioral deficient needing to be adjusted. Or you walk into the store, and their whole position is, we're going to make it better for you to shop, and they want to make you want potato chips. And while I'm out getting potato chips, maybe I'll get some popcorn. And maybe I'd like a brand new TV to sit in front of while I eat those. And let me get some beer. Where's the line drawn about this, folks? That's the the, the most stupid part of it. When does the government, when do you see, they're already doing it now. They want to do this now to you. Where does the line stop when, when someone in government gets a hold of it? They're already doing it at the military side. Yes, there's some limitations. Folks, I just can't imagine anymore after watching and seeing the technology come so fast. But that's just not already been solved and they're not telling us about it, but that it's solvable. Even the IMF said about the Bitcoin, any of the problems that started by, uh, uh, that created by this so-called uh, cryptocurrency thing protocol is fixable. We'll fix it. So the devices can shock the brain back to a healthy state without input from a physician. I mean, you really need to read these stories, folks. I don't have the time to really go through most of it. It's right here. Your future is happening, and you're going to be involved in it. And at one point, you're not going to be certainly be in control at all. And how will you be able to know you're not? And how do you, that's the other one. How do you know that you're not? When you understand that they can do things that are wrong, and they don't have to tell you, how do you not know that things are happening? And I don't mean just about you. Anything going on in the back door, in the back room. How do you know that corruption is not happening in your judicial system? Now, all you all that listen to me laughed, but that's not my point. You know that. Of course, it's not corrupt. But you've got to be able to bring them out, not with opinions, but with the very devices that they've put in place that tried to give the impression that they were independent and objective. If you're independent and objective, and I have a property right in myself, and that relates to my ability to go to the law of the land, you don't have a right to do this. 
you know, I had to go a little bit longer way to get there, but I get back to my right to be able to control my possession that came antecedent your authority and your condition. If you don't have that view in your mind, and, and then there's a couple more steps, then you're you're going to be these people in the future that we see in the movies. You won't need to have a pill taken, folks. Forget the red pill. I'm telling you, folks, you don't li- people don't listen to me. Literally, people do not listen to what I'm saying. I hear it all. I see it all the time. It's happening right in front of our face, and we we just accept it. We've just been told that there's scientists in the world, so-called Israelis, again the creation of the queen, to create and, and destroy people's lands and impose an occupation somewhere else. You know and buy their fruits, folks. Is the same people that are the mercenary group in the world called a state. They're coming up with all the things that the future has in store for their zyocentric, technocratically imposed control. It's all here for us to see. Through their administration and through the regulatory conditions that you don't talk to, that you don't coalesce together to work with and uh, speak out against and to start to maintain the control, they are taking it from you. FDA approves a pill that tells your doctor whether you've swallowed it or not. Well, I guess for people that have a real problem, like with Alzheimer's or dementia, you'd want to know they took the pill. But this is now one of the Internet of Things pharmaceuticals. In fact, companies are now tying this technology to old technologies that are running out of patent protection, and so they can make a so-called new product now, which is a track and trace pharmaceutical. So if you think you're going to avoid some of the pills that set you up to be receptive to this technology, like we're told happened to the robot, the uh, autonomously controlled or the externally controlled dragonfly, you're epigenetically changed by this. They'll know when you're not taking your stuff. And they'll know how much you've been taking of it. You don't think this is all tied together, then I think you're not paying attention. I'm laying out for you your, 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 the future of how this all rolls down to take even the most innocent about you of you and turn you into whatever someone else has a harebrained idea to do. Oh, wouldn't it be a joke? I'll make a $2 bet. I can't take that, sea urch- that street urchin and put him into some high-class thing and he'll fail. Or I can make him a success. You don't think that's going on all the time. We're missing it, too. The doctors are going to be... FDA is all engaged with utilizing this technology, again, to advance profits, to extend profits out for companies, but to, more importantly, impose this uh, Internet of Things. And don't don't get me wrong. There's, there's the, the technology is fantastic stuff. Given we could keep it out of the hands of the uh, of those in... Well the, well, the sociopaths, they, they'll deny they are, but, but they're not. And you hear that, again, we talked about this before, you got the FDA is going to be doing whether you got a shot, they got the way to, to, to track it, and then we get this little story about 50 employees fired after refusing a flu shot. What do you think the future nanotechnology is going to be doing about this idea of whether or not you have been taking the injection? And how they've been getting people to have to do it is now you have to do it. Now, there was a limitation, so listen for that in this story. And this is out, I think, uh, this is done out of Duluth, Minnesota. And apparently they've adjusted their uh, vaccine um, resp- uh, re- obligations to take vaccines in the law to be those uh, two provisions of exemption. And so the limit on this is whether or not you've opted for those two exemptions. And if they said, if you don't, then you're subject. So this is a status changer, your choice. I wanted to point that out. But here it comes, folks. They're going to force you at the point of your job. It costs your job now. If you aren't part of the herd, that they want and need to keep uh, abilities to control. If those injections, uh, you're going to be walking around these same things that are able to read you at a distance and find out who you are, are going to be able to identify whether or not that you are part of the herd or you're a, an outlaw runner. 
They'll do it at a distance. It's all here. They're going to isolate you out. They're going to deem you to be the criminal. It's going to be to do that. You can be a denier. You can say, I don't, I don't do anything wrong. I'm telling you, it's already evidence now as they implement this. They will den- identify you wrongly. And apparently that's okay. Because we have a justice system that does justice. So we have to bring everybody in it. And if you got a, you got a defense, well then heck, it'll, you'll prevail, right? And this is the system they brought us up into that we have no clue about. So it's on the, now it's happening. If you don't follow the statute, you gotta keep denying it. You wanna keep a job, forget it. I have a, you know, mixed, I mixed emotions here. You didn't want to go, the cannabis people didn't want to go to the DA with your notices. I suppose net neutrality is going to be the same. Oh, you'll file an online petition that won't do a dang thing and then complain that nobody got heard not looking at the administrative side that says if you file a petition, that only counts as one. Instead of filing your own responsive answer to that, you didn't do the cannabis. You didn't, you're not going to do net neutrality, right? Or anything else I've talked about. Why would you even address any of this kind of stuff? Why would you do the vaccines? Why would you engage at all? So those all that have the capacity to understand don't act. You're allowing this on. You become the accessory. And we're now just a few years after I told you that would happen. The mandatory imposition's coming down. They have all their good reasons for it. And it's actually the imposition of your, of your demise. And they're going to pit you against your need in the world. All this stuff you'll notice, it has to go, it attacks your necessities. And you don't know how to use that necessity to, to fight back. New health guidelines say you might have high blood pressure. Does this make sense now about what I'm saying about this last one? You're going to take a pill, it's going to track you. If they lower the standards, doesn't that mean bring everybody more susceptible to the medical profession as well? And this is now allowed, even though there's no proof for it. If you look at the underlying science to all this, again, scientists, are, there's not really any science. It's all it seems to be more based in what they can fabricate as a medicine to fix some ill that's been invented. Why the psychiatry exists. If I make more people crazy, I get more business for my, uh, my uh, professions union people, don't I? If I make more laws, my professions union uh, attorneys, they get more jobs, don't they? Are we gonna are we gonna finally get it, folks? Maybe maybe not. I, I don't I don't know. Health guidelines for blood pressure they drop them, which brings more people susceptible to having high blood pressure, requiring more of this medicine, which is going to have trackers and tracers and the ability that they have to put in the medicines the things that they need to epigenetically change you to become you become more receptive to whatever the external technology is that that's needed. We've already been told that they can do this at a distance. I, I don't know w- w- what what the deal is. So, so we have all this smart technology. We have all this uh, Internet of Things. We have all this monitors, track and tracing going on. Uh, you'd think that people would be uh, uh, would be wary of it, and we tend to think isolated, like this is only happening here in the United States, or it's only happening there, or wherever. And I keep telling you this is a, a major promotion and global con- condition. Uh, we have our one maybe the first, uh, well, for this broadcast, I have the first uh, proof. This is not just where you live, local to you. This is not just your local Walmart. This is a global conditioning for for every all people global. If you think this thing's a small, a small issue. And when you see this kind of integration, you have to know there's a plan. You have to know that someone's pushing this plan and it's in full force and effect and running at full steam. Uh, based on you know, getting to this control, getting you into wanting to be within that smart, so-called smart, not intelligence at, at all, but smart gridding situation. To always push an agenda that's pushing the international behavioral modifications, uh, psychological modifications. I find it interesting that this next report has evidence in it of the people's global receptivity to things smart and to things international behavioral controls and the acceptance of certain things, even though you might grumble. Black Friday, chaos goes global. Topless feminist trashes Ukrainian sweet store as shoppers in Brazil and Greece join in the frenzied struggle for bargains. Now, what caught my mind was this fem, uh, topless feminist uh, in this pictures 
uh, which is nothing too racy. I mean, they have her her uh, upper parts blacked out a little bit. But I was so I used to do photography, folks. <laughs> I used to do this stuff. But notice that these were like all these shots were set up shots. There's nobody. These people went. I don't know how many pictures they took in this store. Nobody around to stop the the uh, the star of the show from destroying parts of the store, uh, taking down uh, taking down stuff off the shelves as a protest uh, to the consumerism that you see all wrapped up in these uh, perfect study, perfect shots. Uh, one so perfect that the photographer was right across her. Nobody in the aisles whatsoever uh, that she's tossing. Chocolate coins at the uh, gold, co you know, foil covered uh, coins at the camera. Perfect shot. Got the action the whole bit. Got the look on her face. Uh, all the stuff all set up. Perfect nonsense going on here. Off the shelves go the cans. Oh, the celebration of throwing all the little pieces of candy all over the place on the floor. Nobody's. Oh, and now we get to the point where we got one guy that looks like some, uh, uh, some. Well, he's in a suit. I don't know what he's doing. I suppose he's some guard uh, hang, dragging her off, uh, perfectly framed, everything perfectly framed. To know that was a setup, folks. But this is the theme they're bringing, the international connectivity and the issues at hand that you're going to have to see to see this. And then we get down to the picture of what the crowds are doing. And how many times do I see in this picture that people are grabbing up and mauling themselves over grabbing a smart TV? Something that is now the it's it's command central for surveillance and control. The uh, people are fighting to get this stuff. Well, it's a I have to laugh. It's a kind of the ongoing joke. This is global, folks. This is not just you. Just because I say so, you got this there and the other thing. This is a global thing. People respond the same everywhere given they have the capacity. How many times am I looking at smart TV? It's the only thing that was printed on the box to tell you you live in a smart society. Look at all these people that want something smart. I'm looking picture after picture. People fighting to get this stuff. I'm 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 scrolling through it. Just I'm I'm caught my scrolling through. Like how many pictures? Are, how many times are you going to see this advertisement, this propaganda put in you of your conditioning and acceptance of things smart in the world? It, it's um, I'm just going through it, trying to figure out what else <laughs> what else to say. People standing in line in the store, right at the windows, the door busters. How many people hit the hit the streets? It's it's a global thing is the point. Now what's the point about the smart folks? It that is what the future is. That's how they're implementing this entire structure against you. I've been telling you about this. It's not an opinion for me. It's been written. It's how they do it. The technology was advancing it. They were telling us the whole time. This is the first I think the first time I can show you in pictures. The, it's almost come to fruition. I've told you, you will find yourself, you will ask to have this stuff come on you. And we have evidence of that. If I didn't have it in any other place, I have it here. Amazon reveals its top five selling, its five top selling items as it steals half of all online sales on Black Friday. What are the first two, three, excuse me, three items, the best selling? You don't believe that people will accept and choose this smart future, which is a complete control of their lives and integration surveillance and everything. The Amazon Echo, the Fire TV Stick with Alexa voice remote, and the TP-Link smart plug, all are smart devices. People, that's the top five in the people. Your neighbors are asking for this trouble. You might have been asking for this trouble. When did I start this broadcast on the danger of they're now going to DNA to be able to talk to you and get, actually inter, inter, interpolate it to a, attack people even if they're innocent? Was their DNA? What is the, the sixth? One, two, three, four, five. The sixth, this link looks like, no, fifth, the last in the list. What is it, folks, that the top selling thing that, 
proving to me, if it doesn't prove it to you, people are being programmed to do this to themselves. Put themselves into the line of fire. Put them into harm's way. The last test, it's a, the last thing, the top of the top five, the last thing in the list is the 23andMe DNA test. How, how much more a natural broadcast line uh, lineage could I have predicted here? Pulling the DNA stuff up early in the week and have it come out and prove that the fifth most common thing people bought this year on Amazon, half of the market, is a DNA test. And then you find out they can use all that against you. If that isn't defined what I've been saying, I and I'm partly going to, I want to laugh. I want to bust out laughing. And yet, I can't. Folks, anybody listening to me, I want you to tell me how, how, no, the DNA test could be the fifth thing. If that's not an ingrained programming already in people, and they're telling us they're going to use it, they, the ubiquitous they, the inventors and creators and fabricators of chaos. Again, right, right in our in our face, right in our face. I'm pausing here, folks. Are you thinking? Are you understanding? how coherent and cohesive this plan is coming together for them, the they. You will kill each other for this stuff. You'll maim each other for this stuff. If you, what, you go through to get this, they're, they're reading everything about you. They're identifying you. They're, they're fabricating. Who's going to be the one that violates the other by punching them in the face? So when they walk out, we'll take that TV back. We'll take it into it. We'll have it in to watch it in the PD while we're, while we're eating our donuts. And we'll put him in the jail system. And we got all the proof to, to kill him, to put him away for a long time for assaulting the rest. You, you walk right to slaughter on every aspect of this. They've measured you. They've figured out if you've taken your medicine. They've done all this stuff as you walk through. Maybe you get there, and now that they know that you want one, they now program you so you don't punch someone in the face. Only the thing is, you're not the one that was going to punch them in the face, and they misdiagnosed you, and so what happens there? Oh, well, no, only can, time will tell, I suppose. You collapse into a big, a big pool of jelly because you can't function. They did something to you that you weren't really wired to do anyway. And they do it under security? Make your life or your purchasing experience better? Oh, and by the way, you need to go get some popcorn and chips and uh, go buy another TV. The one that's not for sale. The one that looks better to you. And as you're leaving the little, uh, the, the last little bit, they go and take your meds. And they say, wait a minute, you can't go. You have to go get your meds at the pharmaceutical, the pharmacy. Because we just found out that the uh, our our, our uh, we're tied into a Trump scare and uh, your your blood pressure is a little bit high here. You need to run on over there. Since we got it all covered by a doctor online, he says you got high blood pressure. We're going to have to give you some of this blood pressure medicine. Oh, and we by the way, did you look at the product data sheet? Did I also uh, forget to tell you that those uh, those uh, new medications that you now have to have? But you're now forced to do because they now claim you have some problem. Will cause other side effects, folks. You see how they got this wired so, so well? They play us like a fiddle. They play us like a fiddle and we fall right into it. I have the evidence. But if you don't believe it, I have the evidence now. If you don't believe me, watch the pictures. Things smart on a global scale everybody's tearing each other up to get is the technocratic's tool, the technocrat's tool to bring in all this other stuff to make you out to be whatever they want. And that's not going to happen to most all y'all until you want to stand up and say, well, I've, I've had it with this stuff. You come up and say, oh, I've had it with Mon Satan's causing my rash. Next thing you know, you don't have that thought no more. They give, they give you, they put a boil on your carbuncle or something.
to get you for shoplifting. Monsanto new chemical halted after causing rashes. See, right now we have a little bit of thing. There's a uh, we have a little bit of protection. Largest producer of genetically modified seeds, the notorious Roundup weed killer Monsanto, has stopped the launch of a chemical designed to be applied to crop seeds. Multiple reports show the new chemical causes rashes in people. Well, I think that's some of the medications they give you. Maybe it's the same stuff, folks. You look at the product data sheet. So the new product is called Nema Strike. You may want to be aware of it. Tell anybody that's out there if it's uh, if you got an old old thing, uh, an old bit about this. Uh, they uh, will claim that this is all stuff is okay. Uh, the pharmaceuticals, the biochemical, the oh, what all the chemical com com companies. It's all about the profit. And then it way they wait until you have a response, and they'll deny this is going on in you until a sufficient number kind of have to come to respond. That's the problem. That that model is everywhere in society. They will not come. You don't want to talk about cannabis to the DA? Fine. Not enough coming to you. You want to speak through a petition that, that we only think, we only look at like as one? Fine. Go ahead. Do it that way. Don't do it the way you're supposed to do it. And then complain. Do it the way we tell you. In the meantime, Monsatan's new chemical is no good. And this came back through, and Mexico revokes Monsatan's permit to market GMO soy. All right, so we have another country, not the United States protecting everybody. No, another country comes up uh, that works with, uh, that uh, is, is consistent with other countries as well. Uh, we in the United States would say are, are problem nations. Uh, they are causing, uh, withholding a permit. A permit is a commercial agreement to allow a company to do something that with, is, other, is a crime uh, if they don't have that permission. So understand all your professions, like the bar association, they're committing crimes. They have to have they have to have a permission. They have to they have to come by a set of rules to regulate you. So as I ask you, you have a license to do something. Why is the why are you considered a criminal using the highway was granted to you? Well, Monsanto is a corporation. It's doing something that harms people. The government stepped in and said, we're not going to allow you to do that. That you can't. Your product isn't good enough that we can even regulate it. It's not even that safe. And they base all this information on the on, on the, the records of the company. We find out for more than a half century the sugar industry has used big tobacco tactics to suppress sugar cancer link and to confuse science. Confuse science. That's supposed to be science. That's the best available science is the confused science. Is another report you'll get on the broadcaster. It explains that the big industry will protect itself, and these agencies in the United States are not protecting you. They're not even in the business to protect you. In the beginning of this broadcast, I've told you that they would be using these DNA these DNA things, and they're being accepted as lawful things for law enforcement, which is executive, and the judiciary for the courts. Now, there's still some testing going on. I'm telling you that's the future. Thank you for tuning in today. hope something I said uh, fires you up uh, and into action, more important than just firing you up and substantiate some things that I've been saying and also allows you to see that I'm saying things that should be straight up what they are. There's nothing uh, nothing else to know uh, more than that you need to get involved and do something about what you see. That you need to look uh, with a, a very critical eye when you hear things and understand there's a, all the omissions and things not said are about as important to understand and apply. The world isn't that big a bad place. It is until you, st well, it will be until we stand up in a unified uh, some kind of a unified purpose with all of us doing something that we find wrong in our own way and doing it the right way. Thank you, uh, Grimner, for reallibertymedia.com and the, for the broadcast and the archives and uh, Jules at ucy.tv, uh, the recast, pastcast, and the, and the um, broadcast. Appreciate that. Terrestrial broadcasters and anybody else forwarding the broadcast and, and linking it out and sending it. I appreciate all that stuff. It really helps out to get the word. I'll talk with you next week. Tech diffs are nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose.
That's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. <laughs>